Welcome back everybody to another Dark Souls video. This time we're on our third and final game, Dark Souls 3. We will be trying to beat every single boss in this game. The DLC are also included. Will I beat this challenge? We'll have to see about that. But before we get into this video, I'll ask that you subscribe and like. My goal is 500 subscribers. Now let's get straight into this video. We first bring back the Omega Chad that is Alpha Male. I then load into this area called the Cemetery of Ash. I find this enemy and try out Dark Souls 3's new combat. I have to say, I love it so far. It is so fast paced and fun. I then make it to the first bonfire in the game. I light it and sit down. After that, I then make it to the first boss of this awesome game, Ludix Gundyr. This boss is the greatest starting boss in all of the games. He is very fast, but does have a lot of openings to take advantage of. It is hard, yet a very fair boss. Also, this music goes hard for this boss. I mean, it is such a great track. After half of his health is depleted, phase 2 starts. He turns into a gooey mess. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> this boss is rather simple after he transforms. He is less likely to hit you, and you're more likely to hit him. I kill him, and this is a great start to one of the best Souls games out. I enter this castle arena and started to make my way through it. I found this chest and, uh, watch what happened. Needless to say, I ended up dying. After that, I found this old lady and she gave me a flag to use, and then I made it to the next boss, Vort. He is a dog-like creature that runs around with the mace. He is very fast, but rolling towards him is most likely a way to get you out alive. Once he enters phase 2, his whole body is just a hitbox. Just try your best not to be in his path, and you should make it out alive. I killed him and felt a great sense of satisfaction. God, this game's excellent so far. I find myself in a very decrepit place. It's like a rundown village with cursed inhabitants. I made my way through it and killed all the terrors that lied around me. My inner gamer was actually quite amused by all of this. I made it to an arena where there was a couple of enemies. I was prepared to fight when all of a sudden an arrow came and destroyed them all. It scared the frick out of me. After that scare, I made it to an open arena where a tree suddenly came to life. It's time for a new boss, Curse Rotted Greatwood. It's a pretty cool boss. You go for these white ball sacks all on it till they explode. This will do a bunch of damage to the tree. The cool part is when phase 2 starts. It destroys the floor and you go straight to the bottom. After this, it's more of the same and I kill the boss. That was quite fun and I'm enjoying myself quite a lot. I run through the swamp like area. There's not much to say about it, but then I made it to the next boss, the Crystal Sage. This is a witch like boss that teleports all around the arena. They have multiple spells they use. It took me a while, but I slayed this boss. Not much to say though. I enter this church-like area and start making my way through it. There are a couple interesting areas, but my monkey brain just wanted to find the boss. For some reason, I summon people, even though this boss, Deacons of the Deep, is really freaking easy. I enter the boss arena with the boys, and it's smacking time. The boss is basically beating up a dude who has a red light on them. After doing that for a bit, phase 2 will start. It's basically phase 1 except for this time. You beat up one dude. I beat this boss and moved on with the game. That was actually quite fun for being such an easy boss. I make it to another swamp like area. With these weird looking birds, I made it past them to the next major boss. The Abyss Watchers. They're sort of like Artorias with their fast and fancy movement. They have this cool twist where two more Abyss Watchers come out. One helps you and the other tries to kill you is a very cool first phase. After getting to phase 2, you get a cutscene and it gets you back into the action. This time, there's just one very powerful Abyss Watcher. He has a sword emboldened with the flame. Every attack they do has a flame follow up. It is very difficult and I died a couple of times, but in the end, I killed this fantastic boss. That's my first Lord Ascender down. The catacombs broke me on the inside. There are just a lot of rats and endless corridors. Not to mention there are these weird looking skeletons too. It is overall just a weird area. I make it to the skeleton cup looking thingy. I then get teleported to the depths of despair. And I think, is this a for real or on goth moment? Then I make it to High Lord Wolnir, and which is uh pretty easy. All you gotta do is hit his bracelet and he dies. That's it. The next boss I face is Old Demon King. There's not much to say about the boss or the area before it. 
I mean, it's sorta entertaining. He just really spits fire everywhere. There's attack where he charges up, he spits out fire, but he leaves himself defenseless after. That's another boss down, I guess. I have a confession to make. I forgot to record the area coming up to Pontiff Sullivan. Just know it was a really cool area that you must experience. Now onto the battle. It is a pretty basic sword fight. He attacks you and you dodge and attack him. It's really satisfying to pull off though. Phase 2 is where things get really dope. He bursts out these wings and creates another version of himself. They attack together. It may seem unfair, but it's really not. They do the same move, so it's easy to dodge them both. Overall, a really cool fight that I enjoyed a lot, and I think everyone should do it. Yorm the Giant is the next one on the boss list. This fight is really cool purely for the spectacle. You are legit fighting a massive giant with a wind sword. Yorm telegraphs his move very obviously, but it doesn't matter. I'm fighting a freaking massive giant. It is an awesome fight for just the spectacle it brings. That's another Lord of Cinder down. I accidentally did something really stupid while not recording. I killed the old lady who gives you the flag. The worst mistake I've ever made in Souls history. Killing her spawned the dancer at the Boreal Valley. A really freaking tough boss, even for a god gamer like me. Now onto the fight. The dancer is very fluid with her movements. Like the name suggests, it is a dance. You can't be greedy or the dancer will catch you and kill you. In phase 2, the dancer gets another sword and start doing the twirlies, which killed me a bunch of freaking times. I survived it this time and dealt as much damage as I could. The rest of the fight is the same as the first half, except for two swords. I killed her and felt great satisfaction. God, this game is fantastic. I made it back to Anne Orlando, and it was actually quite a surprise. It is a lot less vibrant, but still looks as beautiful as in Dark Souls 1. After that amazing callback, I made it to the next boss. Aldrich is next on the boss counter. It has a slug-like body with a human-like top. It's her attacks with an arrow and a spear that Aldrich holds. Overall, the fight is fun and I enjoyed it quite a lot. Also, the arena is the same as Ornstein and Snow. I killed it and yet another Lord of Cinder dead. The next boss up to die is the Dragon Slayer armor. Its arena is on a bridge which is a really cool area for a fight to take place in. His attacks are pretty simple but still hard to dodge. He usually uses his axe to attack, but he also uses his shield too. He will sometimes charge up his axe and attack. This move was the hardest for me to dodge. Other than that, it was a really nice boss that took much of my gamer skill to beat. Guys, I got bad news. I forgot to record one of the bosses. It was Osiris, the Consume King. I finished the fight but forgot to hit the record button. I'm sorry, but we'll just have to move on. Do y'all remember Ludix Gundir? Well, Champion Gundir is him, but roided it out. This boss has some of the same moves as the earlier version, but he adds twists that make it much harder. For Phase 2, his eyes turn red and he starts charging at you. After that, he becomes a freaking martial artist. Look, he is kicking me around and beating me up with his halberd. I died so many times to this boss. After a lot of failure, I finally killed him and I was so dang happy. I love this boss so much, and the track is still freaking fire. We make it to this giant room where the next boss is located, Lorian. He has a giant sword and he can teleport all around. The hardest part of this first phase is finding out where Lorian is teleporting to. Once you find that, you can easily dodge the sword and get some attacks in. Once the second phase begins, Lothric will hop onto Lorian's back. Lothric will spit out spells while Lorian will continue to use his sword and teleport around. This is really challenging, but me and my summon made it through. That is the last Lord of Cinder to go down. The ancient wyvern fight is probably the most lame fight of all time. All you do is run up to the top of the arena, after that you do a plunging attack and the wyvern is killed. That's basically the whole fight. At least the spectacle of killing a giant dragon is cool. We enter the boss fog and find this dragon coming straight for us. It's the king of storms. The hardest part of this fight by far is the camera. It is so hard to keep the dragon in view while also dodging away. It is a good thing this face has very little health in it. The dragon has some attacks, but it's the man on top who usually attacks. He uses his spear and lightning on it to attack us. It's a cool fight, but now on to the fun part of this fight. Phase 2. The man gets off his dragon and fights on his own. The man is the nameless king and he is quite the challenge. He usually throws combos and attacks 
at you and then let you get some damage onto him. The hard part of this fight is the Nameless King is very quick. Oftentimes he would hit me before I could dodge. That is very hard to do, but I mean, it's a very fun fight and I still do it to this day. That's the Nameless King down once and for all. It's DLC time and the first boss up is Grave Tinder, Great Wolf. There's not much to say about this boss. There's an NPC human and then a wolf. The Grave Tinder dies before the wolf can even join. The wolf has pretty easy attacks, so it wasn't that hard. That's the first DLC boss done. That was pretty entertaining. The next boss up is Freed, and this boss is so freaking hard. I legit could not do it at all without a summon. The first phase, believe it or not, is pretty easy. She has a scythe and she can use frost. She can also go invisible, but you know which way she goes. We get through this phase without much trouble. Phase 2 is also pretty simple, but it's much harder than phase 1. Ariandel enters the battle, and now you can focus on them both. Ariandel uses a bull-like thingy and moves around the arena, crushing things wherever he goes. However, Freed still has the same moves. You can focus on whoever you want due to the phase's shared health bar. I finished it. You may think, oh, the fight is over. No, there is a phase freaking 3. This phase is so hard that I cannot push myself through the mental torture of doing it alone. Freed now gets Black Flame added to all her moves. This absolutely dominates your health bar. She goes invisible all the time and is generally much harder. Also, you can still get Frostbite too, which makes this fight even harder. It took a while, but I finished the boss and was happy I didn't have to go through the pain again. It's still a really good boss and it's worth trying for the challenge. We enter the next DLC and it's time for the Demon Prince fight. There are two demons, but only one of them attacks at one time. The other one is getting ready for the other to leave. They have attacks that use their claw and fire. This is a really good duo battle that is really challenging. That's not it though. Once you kill them both, they form into the Demon Prince. The Demon Prince has more health and newly added moves. They get more fire attacks and also some more melee attacks. This fight requires a lot of focus, but once you get the dodge time right, it should be smooth sailing after that. I killed the Demon Prince and was happy with the DLC so far. The next boss up is pretty disappointing. It's the Spear of the Church fight. This fight uses a real life player, which is pretty cool, but it doesn't compare to the other bosses in the game. They have a really cool spear move though, but that's really it for the boss. The next boss is my personal favorite in all the Souls games. It's the man himself, Slave Knight Gale. He is a really hard fight that I still do from time to time because it is that fun. He follows the same formula as the Nameless King. You have to wait your turns to get your hits in. Don't be too greedy because that will lead to a quick death. He has a sword and he does lots of combos with it. But he does leave you time to get your hits in. Now onto the second much cooler phase. Before I get into it, may I just say how freaking awesome the music is? The music makes me feel epic in all the right ways. Now onto the battle. Gil is much harder in this phase due to the fact that he has follow ups to all his attacks. Yeah this man is so cool, his cape does damage. He also has a combo and shoots a lot of arrows out of it. He follows the same pattern of doing attacks and letting you get your hits in. Gil introduced lightning into the fight too. I can't get over how cool and awesome this fight is. I killed him and felt the greatest sense of satisfaction I've ever felt in any of these games. Madir is the last DLC boss and he's also really challenging. He has a huge health pool and lots of long combos. He uses a combination of fire and melee moves and it makes this a really hard fight. Luckily I had a Giga Chad summon with me who helped out a lot. Once you could get a repost on Madir, his health basically disappears. We killed him, and that's it for the DLC. One last boss remaining, and I'm gonna do it all alone. I enter the boss arena, now it's time to end this for good. Soul Center has multiple movesets, one with the sword, one with the dagger, one with the lance, and finally one with the staff. Most of these moves can be easily dodged, except for the dagger, which is by far the hardest. If you could push on with all your might, you will beat him, but that's not it. There's a second phase. Just listen to the music it plays. Yeah, it's Gwen's music from Dark Souls 1. It was beautiful to hear this awesome piece once again. That's not it though. The Soul Cinder also gains Gwen's moveset too. They added a little bit of spin to it, but it's mostly like Dark Souls 1. I killed the Soul Cinder and was both happy and sad that I finally beat this masterpiece of a game. I summon the Firekeeper and let her take care of the flame. The cycle is finally over. Dark Souls is finally over. 
I think this game is a masterpiece and no one can change my mind. The combat is fluid, the bosses are absolutely fantastic, and the music's the best it's been. I'm sad we are done with Dark Souls, but it's a perfect series, and I would never change it. It did what it intended to do, and it ended in a triumphant way. Also, we still have Eldering to do. If you want to see that, hit the like and subscribe button. I've enjoyed my time with the series, and I'll never forget it. That's it for my video, and I'll see y'all in whatever I do next. Goodbye. Ashen One, hearest thou my voice still? Thank you.